a passionate instigator and dynamic problem solver. Dr. Kevin Ross Emery, the host of the Dr. Kevin Radio Show, will be taking you outside the box, behind the curtain, and identifying the load of BS we are fed every day. And now, Dr. Kevin. Hello, hello, hello. And welcome to the Dr. Kevin Show. Here on Ohm Times and... We already heard the end. This is our second Thursday of the month. And our second Thursday of the month is inspirational, motivational. We call it Thoughtful Thursday, where we have stories that to about inspirational, motivational people, thoughtful people in the world, and sometimes just stories to make you thoughtful. My regular co-host for this episode is none other than Lori Powers Otto. Lori, how are you? I am wonderful, Dr. Kevin. How are you? Oh, well, you know, I I I got I'm 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 all over the place. You know you I find peace. <laughs> I know. But I was very drawn today for some reason. But I wanted to start today's show off in a, in, a, in a particular way. And, you know, I know that you've got some motivational, inspirational stories to share. I do. And we're going to get to all of those. And I want to find out how your Labor Day was and some of this. But I do want people to stop for a second. And I want them to realize and listen that no matter what we have heard, there are still, as of this moment, 32,130 new cases of COVID today. Yesterday, there was over 35,000. Today, there have already been 831 new deaths. And yesterday, there was over 1,200. And in our own state of New Hampshire, today there were 56 new cases, and 15 of those were for kids under the age of 18. 15, almost a third, were now kids. Kids who may have, as some kids have, who have had COVID have had, long-lasting effects. So we have no idea if and when they will go away. Maybe COVID doesn't kill them, but it negatively impacts their health. For at this point, for some, what is an indefinite period of time. People that recover, I just had somebody reach out to me today that I had worked with months ago. And she has cleared COVID. She's been COVID cleared for five, four, four months, five months, she is still having some of the side effects. They have not gone away. Yeah. And I want people to be really thoughtful for a moment that if you are lucky enough that this has been abstract, then count your blessings. If these numbers are completely abstract, if you don't know anybody whose life three, six, nine months later is still being affected because they got COVID, or somebody that died because they got COVID, then count your blessings because you will. You will at some point. And do not take your eye off the ball. I saw so many stories over the weekend of Labor Day of people that were just tired of wearing masks, tired of taking precautions. But those are the people that haven't been intimately touched yet. Right. They haven't had anybody close enough to them get really sick with it. Maybe they've known some people that got sick and just were just a little sick and recovered because there are out there. But it isn't yeah. just the death number. 
It is the number of people who continue to live with the side effects afterwards as well, and that includes children. And this is a number we're going to watch go up all fall as we have made COVID a political football with the opening and closing of our schools and our universities. And so I'm not going to make this a political show. I'm no interest in doing that. But at this moment, on Thoughtful Thursday, I want people to be thoughtful for a moment. I want them to think of a child that they know who, if got sick with COVID, might have side effects that never go away or last for years. I want them to think of somebody they know, because they know somebody who is in one of those categories that are most affected that could die. The person I talked to today, my client, perfectly healthy, none of the issues, none of the factors that said you were going to have this kind of roller coaster ride with COVID. Perfectly healthy, exercised, ate good food, did daily spiritual practices, took care of herself on all levels, and months later, she still feels the after effects. So I want people to be thoughtful. Thoughtful of somebody you love and watching them go through that. Before you decide it's inconvenient to wear a mask. So you watch one of those videos that says, oh, this is just a conspiracy theory, and it's really not that bad. These are fake numbers. And on that note, I'm going to do, I would like to do a little prayer, and then we will move on to our stories. Okay. Father, Mother God, we ask at this time that you be with those people who did not get a chance to say goodbye, that you are with those weeping and sorrowful and grieving souls that could not be there when the one they loved passed. We ask that you are there to give strength to those people who are directly living with those side effects or has somebody in their family who is. We're asking, Father, Mother, God, that you are with those souls who passed isolated and perhaps thinking that nobody cared because they didn't know or could not comprehend why no one was there that they knew when they died. Father, Mother, God, we ask for compassion and insight and illumination and guidance that we may grow stronger together and find that common band of humanity that we all share, that speaks to us that we are all one. One is hurting, we are all hurting. We ask all of this. Amen. Well, thank you for that, yeah. Dr. Kerr. <clears throat> thank you very much for that. And you got to stop being in my head all the time because. I personally know a three-year-old that I just adore that has COVID. And he seems like he's going to be okay, but we just don't know yet. You know, I mean, you just don't, you just don't know. We don't know how this is going to go. And he's the sweetest little thing. And they, they tried to take, you know, precautions and, Loosened up just a tiny little smidge, maybe. Probably not. His parents are magnificent. You know, they try to do all the right things, and he still came down with it. Mm -hmm. So, 
I, I personally need people to be thoughtful. I, um, we ran into a guy that we know, my husband and I, and he told us, we were wearing masks, we were out in public, but he told me his dad committed suicide. And I gave him a hug. You know, neither one of us are sick, whatever. But I still self-quarantined for two weeks because I didn't want to take the chance. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I, people need to be thoughtful. I mean, I wasn't going to not hug someone whose dad just committed suicide. Maybe that's, mm-hmm. you know, I don't know if that's good or bad. But, but so thank you for that. That meant a great deal to me, that prayer. Um, and my stories that I'm going to share tonight are, are related loosely to this, well, to this COVID pandemic. So let's hear what Uncle, what Uncle, what Dr. Kevin has to say first. Yeah. Well, first of all, I want to remind our listeners this is a live call in show. You can call in at 202-570-7057. That's 202-570-7057. If you have a short a story to share that's inspirational, motivational, or that will help people be more thoughtful or think more thoughtfully, please call in and share it. All we ask is that your story is respectful. And certainly don't mention anyone's name unless you have their permission. So I want to put that out there, first of all. And um, I actually want to move into, in this moment, the fact that I'm going to brag for a moment that I did, a, I did something very thoughtful this weekend. you have any ideas? you want to take a guess? No, tell us. We're excited. Share. I took three days off and gave myself unlimited self-care. Yay. That is so important. Thank you for doing that. You needed to do that. mm -hmm. I went up and stayed with friends in Grantham, New Hampshire, and went hiking and by the lake and in the woods and ate whatever I wanted and slept in and just had good conversation and watched the movies from Friday night until Monday afternoon. And we, you know, went out a couple of times, all masked up and went to a raptor uh, thing at the Science Center in uh, Keechee, Vermont. And... um. We did uh, and saw some magnificent birds. I posted them. I think you liked them. You saw those. Oh, that's um, one of my favorite places in the world to go. So, yeah, yeah. I was jealous. Yeah. <laughs> and, but I want to remind the listeners that one of the thoughtful things, especially if you are somebody who is doing an essential service, somebody who is on some kind of the front line, somebody who has been under greater need since COVID has started, you must take time for yourself. You must be thoughtful to yourself. Um, you must be what I call healthy, healthily selfish. Um, and here's, here's the funny codicil to the story, Miss Lori. So I'm going up, and I have this belt that I had bought when I had been on the thinner side before, and I could only give, ever get it into the first belt loop buckle. And now I've got it all, all the way to the end because, you know, I've lost so much weight and, you know, continue to get in shape and stuff like this. But it never goes all the way quite to the end, and that's okay because, you know, I was at one of my thinnest points before when I could only get it to the very first one. And, and and hope springs eternal. So I bought the belt because I liked it and said, I'm just going to shrink into it. And I did. It was yeah. 10 years later. But, you know, hey, who's counting? Um, That's right. And I said, I'm going to go away this weekend. I track my food because it's just a good habit. 
but I'm not going to care if I go over calories or if my macros are off. It's good eating. They, the, the woman is a, the, the couple is a fabulous set of cooks and they cook healthy, good stuff, but I'm going to do what I want and eat and just enjoy and just be lazy. And I wore that belt up. And when I wore that belt down back home, it was all the way over to the furthest loop and it was a little loose on me. And I was like, I just ate like a pig for three days. How did I lose weight? Now, who hates me now? <laughs> Actually, that's just how it works sometimes. sometimes uh-huh. You need to indulge a little bit. Mm-hmm. Well, anyway. So before we move on to our stories about the rest of the world, did you do anything exciting or fun over Labor Day weekend? Uh, actually, no, we didn't do anything this weekend. We, well, we did house projects. We're, you know, you know us, we're always doing house projects. We enjoy it. And we've been uh, cooking a lot of the food from our garden, you know, preparing it for the winter. And uh, we've made some amazingly delicious, like roasted tomatoes and potatoes and whatever lots of peppers. So yeah, nothing terribly fun and exciting, but still very lovely. We did take a nice motorcycle ride, went out and dropped my grandson's birthday present off to him. And that, that was lovely. That's about well, it. Well, you know, I, I will, I, since you've obviously forgotten, I'm going to text you my address. So next time you're out spinning on your motorcycle, you can drop a care package of fresh vegetables off at my front door. Cooked, of course. <laughs> <laughs> and on that note, we're going to take our first break and then we're going to come back and we're going to share some thoughtful, inspirational, and motivational stories here on the Dr. Kevin Show. Conscious Media for Conscious Minds. Om Times. Have you ever wondered how to change your love paradigm? The secret key is finding a love partnership, not just a regular connection. How do you find these? Through conscious relationships. Ascending Hearts Dating is a dating site for people like you that believes in second chances and a different type of spiritual connection. Try Ascending Hearts for free today at AscendingHearts.com and change your love paradigm. Ascending Hearts, the premier dating community for the spiritually awake. Hello, I'm Sandy Sedgbeer, host of Om Times Magazine's flagship radio show, What is Going On? My passion is sifting through information, research, and innovations from new thought teachers, speakers, and researchers, pushing back the boundaries of what we know about life, energy, metaphysics, and the universe. I love shifting perceptions about who we are, why we're here, and how quickly impossible becomes normal when we open our minds, expand our awareness, and accept that the only limits that exist are those we place upon ourselves. So if you're the kind of forward-thinking, eager investigator of what lies beyond the current reality that most perceive, why not make a date to come play with me in the field of possibilities at 4 p.m. Pacific Time, 7 p.m. Eastern Time every Thursday, and together we can discover what's really going on. A social distancing tip. While the CDC urges you to avoid close contact, like hugging or shaking hands, there are other non-physical ways to say hello. Wave, wink, use sign language, salute, smile, give the peace sign, throw up an air high five, do jazz hands. Remember, stay a minimum of six feet or two arms length away from others and stay home if you can. For more info, visit coronavirus.gov. Let's all do our part because we're all hashtag alone together. Brought to you by the Ad Council. Hello, 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 and welcome back to the Dr. Kevin Show here on Thoughtful Thursday, our second Thursday of the month, where Lori Powers Otto and I share inspirational, motivational, and thoughtful stories, things to make you smile, feel good, and make you think. So I'm going to let you open with the first story. How's that? All right. So... 
you might remember we talked about this last time, I did put out a request to my family, friends, people I know to send me their positive firsthand experiences on how they're dealing with the pandemic, how 2020 is affecting them. And I got some really amazing responses. Things like we talked about before, families becoming closer, reestablishing eating meals together and watching TV together at night or, you know, doing things together, things that they've gotten out of the habit of doing because, you know, we get so busy and we get torn in so many directions. And to settle back down into a family life, I mean, I got countless numbers of those stories. And it, you know, it just warms my heart to see people realize that we had gone blind to what was really important. And a lot of people are waking up to realize their health, their family, their their loved ones, that's what's important, not taking an exotic trip and spending money you can't afford to spend and all those things. But there, there are more simpler stories that are bringing just as much joy. Um, I have a friend who lives out in uh, Chicago in Illinois. And because of COVID, she can't, you know, come home to see her family or travel or anything. And she was sick for a long time, and she's, you know, she's finally better. But um, just, you know, the the few things that she talked about. I mean, there's some things I can't share because, you know. But um, one of the two of the things that she shared with me that are so simple that any of us could do and make a huge difference in someone's life made me take pause and one was her second cousin and her second cousin's daughter just video called her just to say hi just to check in just to say i love you and she said that made her heart swell like the grinch on christmas it made her smile and cry tears of joy for days it touched her so much and it was it was a video call. It, it you know, it was simple and thoughtful and loving. And um, you know, the other thing she shared with me that I can share on the air is uh, something very similar. But so her her uncle, who knew that she was missing home, and she was you know, going crazy, happened to stay indoors because in Chicago, you know, it's pretty bad right now. So he he video chatted with her from his front porch, looking like Santa Claus. <laughs> and, uh, you know, just so she could hear the birds and the wind and, you know, the nature that, you know, here, I assume he's in New Hampshire because that's where she's from. You know, and he, he showed her the trees, um, the seedlings of the trees he had taken from her grandparents' home and replanted at his house that have now grown and blossomed and thrived. And she just spoke of how much that meant to her. You know, it didn't cost anybody anything. It, it was just a gesture of love. And well, those are the things... Oh, go ahead. No, go ahead. Yeah, no, I was just saying it was just, uh, and it's just those, those, those are the things that are making me teary-eyed lately. Is reading these stories like that. So well, you know, one the of the one of the things is that you know, because I saw your post fly by, and I haven't had the time to write you anything, and now I'm perfectly content that you've got a ton of people that have written you stuff, so I don't have to feel bad. Um, sure you do. But, oh, sure I do. Oh. <laughs> um, but, you know, things taken for granted that now get appreciated more. Right. And, you know, you, as you were talking, one of the things is we've been out We've been out to eat four times 
since, you know, the restaurants opened back up. You know, we ate once up in Vermont, and then we ate with our friends the rest of the time. And, you know, and it was a takeout order window, and there was all sorts of outdoor seating that was all spread out. So, you know, you could feel comfortable taking your mask down. And then one of the outdoor places they've created in Nashville, again, that there's lots of air circulation and stuff like this, but it used to be that, uh, I don't feel like cooking tonight. Let's just, let's just like, let's just jump in the car and go to a restaurant. And we didn't do that a lot, but we kind of took for granted the fact that, Hey, if we wanted to go get a meal, we could get a meal. You know, we didn't, we could afford the check. We could do it like, you know, and it was just always there as an option and dozens of restaurants and no thoughts. And I've realized that these few meals that I've had have been special because we've thought about it. We've had to plan. We have made an intention. We've gone and we've really appreciated the whole experience because it's now become more of a special experience again. It used to be considered special to go out to dinner, not a, oh, I just don't feel like cooking night. It was, it, you know, it was something. Yeah, I mean, that's how I was raised. We didn't go out to dinner unless it was an occasion. And going out to dinner itself made it an occasion. But so anyways, that's what I thought of when you were talking about that. That, you know. That's it, though. That's, that's exactly it. Okay. Well, I'm glad you're getting these stories, and I look forward to <laughs> seeing what you're going to put together. Um, and, you know, one of the things that uh, happened over this last weekend was by me, like, getting all this rest and relaxation and eating, you know, and just doing this stuff. My creativity went crazy. And I and I started to think. And I wanted to sh- and I and I want to share this with you and with the audience. And hopefully they will benefit from it. So I had to stop myself and said because I was thinking about you know all of the things I have on my plate that I desire to do right now. You know, books that I want to finish, crafty projects I want to work on, a tarot deck I want to be painting. I mean, you know, the list goes on and on. And I stopped and I thought, I am so lucky. I need to be so grateful because, yes, I am not getting the time to do all the things I desire to do all of these projects, but I'm getting time to do some of them. I actually have enough time to be working on this one and that one and back on this one. And it started this whole cascade of thoughts, which ended up leading to a new set of classes I'm going to be offering. And of course, because what do I do? I relax so I can create new classes, right? Of that's course. my work. Uh, <laughs> that, that, that's me being me. Yeah. But in this, we're thinking, okay, so there's the need to do, the have to do, the should do's, and the desire to do's. And about, I started redefining or started looking at, I want to define success better. Most of the definitions of success out there that you find are really bad. They just don't really describe success. That, you know, and I really started thinking about, you know, how many of the have to do's do we really have to do? How many of the should do's do we do because we were always told we were supposed to and we don't necessarily have an attachment to it, but we just do it because we were always told we should. You know, like the most stupid thing in the world was like, make my bed. Well, if you really feel that much better because your bed's made, 
And it really does start your day better because for some reason, that making of your bed is a meditative practice. Well, go for it. But if you make your bed because you should make your bed, but the time it takes you to make your bed, you might have been able to put that in a little bit of other time to do something you really desired to do, then leave that damn thing unmade. Amen. Is that Amen. A, is that a should you should hold on to? And how many have to and need tos are really just shoulds that we've told ourselves, that we've been conditioned. And that part of being in a successful life is having that balance of, yeah, there are some things I have to do. There are some things I need to do. I need to breathe. I need to eat. You know, I mean, there are some things I need to do or life doesn't, like, look so good. Uh, you know, black spots in front of your eyes and hitting the pavement because you're not breathing. But it's not my idea of a good time. Yeah. But, <laughs> you know. But how many of those could be moved to the should list? And then how much time do you really want to spend on your should list? Really? And how much time do you make sure that you guarantee your desire list set? And are you willing to? So these are some of the, the kind of the things that the time gave me to look at and to say, like, and so I, I came up with, my own definition of success, which, you know, is now floating on a meme out through the, the social media world or will be when it gets posted. I don't know if it's posted yet or not, because it's not something I post myself. I'm just the talent. No. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I do plenty of my own posting, but no, I do plenty of my own posting. But I do have an intern that does, thank, thankfully, I do have an intern that does a lot of my posting for me. Um, but, you know, success is living the life, um, living the life you were meant to live, loving the life you're living, and being who you were, you came here to be. That is success. Yes. Yes. And everything that we look at, because so many definitions of success are about external trappings. Success is about, you know, you will always fail by living somebody else's version of success. Always. Absolutely. Always. Always. And so take more. Go ahead. I just said couldn't more. So, you know, I think that it's so important that we we look and during this time of isolation and being in COVID, that we look and say, This is a perfect time for me to say, what is my definition of success? What do I, what do I, what am I here to do? Who am I? Do I love my life that I'm living? I mean, you can love the life you're living and still have bad moments. I mean, nobody promised you it was going to be, you know, 48 flavors of ice cream 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Give you a stomachache if it was. But am I? This is the time for introspection. This is the time to look at that and to see how many things exhaust me and take my time that really have no meaning to me. Just habit and pattern and training. So that was some of my stuff for the weekend. Uh, <laughs> wow, you really should learn to do more stuff. <laughs> hey, you know, this, this, this this is, I came back completely recharged and ready to go because, to me, this was relaxing. I got to hang out with my creativity on a deck out in the woods with a lovely day and a trail to hike when I needed to just get up and move and great conversation when I needed it. This was, yeah. like John said, almost heaven. It wasn't in West Virginia, but you know what I mean. 
Uh, I've been to West Virginia. I, I, I'll take New Hampshire mountains any day. But yeah. hey. Yeah. But no, but that is the definition of success because you're living a life you love. And to me, that's the, to me, that's my definition of success, living a life you love. I don't believe in greatest, shoulds. Mm-hmm. Oh, I was just saying, I don't believe in shoulds or have tos. Those are all choices. You know, to fill your life with, with just stuff to do that or, you know, obligations to do that, that's not success. That's usually fear-based. Yeah. Well, and when you get to the point that you are willing to ask the question and figure out, you know, not who was I told to be, but who am I meant to be? And am I living the life I came here that my soul put me on this planet to live because you will love that life. So anyway, exactly. So I'm going to share my first story. We don't have a whole lot of time before our next break, but it was a little piece I picked up that had to do with Christy. Oh, oh, we'll get to that when we get back to the Dr. Kevin show. Please feel free to call in at 202-570-7057 for Thoughtful Thursday with myself and Lori Powers Auto. The Real Conscious Connection. Ohm Times Radio. IOM FM. The number one reason girls drop out of school in sub-Saharan Africa is lack of access to feminine hygiene products. The Pads for School Girls Project, an outreach of Humanity Healing International, is changing this paradigm by setting up sewing programs at schools, teaching girls a vocational skill, while producing the reusable pads that help keep them attending classes. The girls pay it forward by making and giving pad kits to other girls in need. To learn more, visit HumanityHealing.org. Humanity Healing is where your heart is. More than 24 million Americans have an autoimmune disorder, and that number continues to grow. I'm Sharon Saylor, and I'm one of those 24 million. To put that number in perspective, cancer affects about 9 million and heart disease up to 22 million. That's why I've brought together top experts and those thriving regardless of their diagnosis to bring you the latest, most up-to-date information. Join me, Sharon Saylor, Friday night, 7 p.m. Eastern, for the Autoimmune Hour on Life Interrupted Radio to find out how to live your life uninterrupted. 911, what is your emergency? My kid shot himself. All right, where's the wounds? 911, what's your emergency? Please help. My son shot his brother. 911, what is your emergency? 911, please state your emergency. Every day, eight kids and teens are unintentionally killed or injured by loaded and unlocked guns. It wasn't locked. It wasn't locked. It wasn't locked. Learn how to make your home safer at endfamilyfire.org. Brought to you by the Ad Council and End Family Fire. Hello and welcome back to Thoughtful Thursday here on the Dr. Kevin Show with Lori Powers Auto and myself. Uh, and you can call in and be part of the conversation at 202 570 7057. And Ms. Lori, something exciting happened on break. Hello? Hello? I'm Hello? here. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh. I didn't realize my phone oh, was on mute. <laughs> what happened? Oh. What happened? <laughs> so I'm outside walking, even though it's still kind of like misty out, and I'm like, well, I won't shrink. And I came around the corner, and there is this magnificent rainbow in the sky to greet me. Nice. With nice. all the colors clearly defined. I you love just that. see the whole prism. And it's just arching over the sky into the heavens. And uh, because part of what it's going over is still some of the darker rain clouds that really pop. So anyway, so um, so a story I want to share, and then I'm going to pass it back to you. 
Do you know the name Christy Teigen? Yeah. Okay. Did you hear about what she did? No, I don't think so. Okay. No. Chrissy Teigen asked teachers on Twitter to send their wish list, and then she fulfilled them by the dozens. Wow. Yep. She helped these teachers, um, you know, supplies for their classroom, whatever they needed, whatever. She, she asked it, and she just went and started fulfilling it. And now, that's what I call an act of kindness. Yeah. And, you know, and she's somebody who, you know, yes, she can afford it, but that's irrelevant. That doesn't mean she has to do it. And she thought to ask the question, teachers, as the school year is starting, what do you need? And then she just started sending it. That gives me, uh, that makes me smile inside. Absolutely. That's beautiful. Okay. You're up. <laughs> but it's, um, this next story, just because this has been coming up a lot, you know, people are losing their careers because of the pandemic, right? So a friend of mine sent me her story. She owned her own business. It ended up closing, which is fine. You know, she was able to get unemployment for a while, and then it went away, and now it's back, and so it's good. But what happened, instead of her just, you know, crawling in a ball and crying because her, she lost her business, she sat down and and did, like you said, looked inside, and Spirit talked to her and said, look, I've been make, I've been having you write books or guiding you to write books, however you want to phrase it. I want you to focus just on the books. So she did. And two of them, two of her books have been recognized for their excellence in children's literature. And she has now found her calling, her path, her joy. She's writing children's books, and they're getting awards, rave reviews. She's getting newspaper articles written about her, interviews. But that's not the only thing she did. Not only did she turn her job upside down and find her true calling, which I think is beautiful and everybody should do, she turned her yard into a nature sanctuary and got it certified as one. Oh, nice. Right? Because the need is there. We need to stop buying into the everybody has to have a nice green lawn. That's the biggest con job, one of the biggest con jobs put on the American public is that we have to have grass, you know, yards. We don't. And my friend Sarah stepped up and made her yard a nature sanctuary in in the city, and it's certified and protected. And she, she's saving all our lives just by making a, a a sanctuary for bees and and butterflies and dragonflies and any other kind of creature you can think of. And I just, I just think that it's, it's, it's courageous and it's wonderful that someone didn't go into, I have to be an accountant as an you know, example for the rest of my life, because that's a good, steady, reliable job, except for now yep. it's not, because you're not working. <laughs> so do what makes you happy. Do what brings you joy. Do what puts love and light out into the world, and you will be happy. That's it. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to throw a codicil in there. Okay. To this, which is, but do it like you were working for somebody else. 
one of the problems is that I see. People say, well, I did what I loved, and it didn't pass, and it didn't do, it didn't go. But when I ask them, you know, like I know one person that did, started doing what they loved, and but they refused to run it like a business. Ah. Uh. like, you know, and so it started to fail. It's like, I'm doing what I love. I'm like, but you're saying to the world, this is what I want my vocation to be. This is what I want. And this is somebody who'd been a manager once upon a time. I said, would you have an employee that said, oh, it's a beautiful day. I think I'm just going to sit out on the lawn. Oh, so-and-so asked me if I could pick up their kids at daycare. And since, you know, I work for myself, I can do that. And would you do that? How long would you keep that employee? You got to fire the mentality. Because if you are doing what you love, you also need to do it not only like you love it, but that you are committed enough to it that you want to bring it to the world. And that means there's some discipline involved. Working for yourself is one of the hardest jobs out there. But it doesn't feel like work, but you still have to have the discipline. And that's where people fail. They do what they love, but they don't do it in an organized way. They don't create a plan. They don't have a strategy, you know. And, you know, and I've had people say to me, because, you know, I've taught at business conferences and been on faculty and stuff like that. I'm like, yeah, but, but I don't like the business plan. You go online. There's plenty of out there. There are people you can talk to. You can go to groups that actually support even free meetings or things to do some of this stuff. And if you really love the business, you should love the business plan because the business plan is going to tell you how to make your business go. So what's there not to love? Right. It, so that's right. my that's my no, only I, I, No, and you're right. That's all I'm saying. You're a hundred percent right. Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. I got momentarily distracted. Oh. Um Yes, a lot of people forget that especially when you work for yourself, you should have a plan or at least an idea. My thing, though, is I know so many people that work work for themselves that that go too far in not having faith and not trusting the flow and not you know, going with the flow that they end up sabotaging themselves because, well, my plan says this has to happen by six months. Well, maybe it happens in seven months. That's okay. Or maybe it never happens at all. That might be okay too, depending on what it is. You have to be able to go with the flow to a point. But you do have to have discipline, you know, and that's, um, but, you know, my friend Sarah, I mean, she's very, very disciplined. <laughs> she uh, She's very good at keeping her ducks in a row and and uh, doing what needs to be done. And she's actually quite amazing. She is a, a Jill of many trades. She has done some remarkable things. But um, and I know other people yeah. that are so rigid in their plans that they're, they become miserable burnt out and disenfranchised with with the good they were trying to do. So there's a lot. Absolutely. Absolutely. I could not agree more. But, you know, that's why you need to know, you know, one of the things that the place I used to was on faculty for um, uh, that was like an MBA level boot camp for entrepreneurs and one of the sayings that they had before I got there, it wasn't mine, but I've definitely adopted it, is if it's not your genius, it's not your job. So, mm. yes, there are things that you're going to find that you may need to do, may want to do, or that you may have to do, that you don't necessarily want to do, and maybe you don't even have to need it. And sometimes, a lot of times, Entrepreneurs, early stages may barter stuff. They may do services for other entrepreneurs that need what you've got and 
you need what they've got and you know and the money thing is a little you know it's a little dicey and you're trying to figure it all out and and that's okay so it isn't like you have to do it all yourself but i'm just saying there needs to be planning i i think my thing is so often People just say, oh, go do what you love and you'll be just fine. Well, I mean, it's a little more than that. That's all I'm saying. Right. No, I hear you. I hear you. I mean, yep. you you, ha- you have to be, you know, like if you're renting a place, you have to make sure you make enough money to pay the rent, pay your bills, you know, and you have to have a, a plan to to acquire that income. But I do. I do agree with the do what you love. Oh, but yeah. Do it with thought and purpose. Don't take really it for do granted. It. Yeah, yep. I really think that's do it. Thing. Take it for granted. Don't just you know, you know. There's there's a thousand million trillion Reiki masters out there. They don't all. Well, most of them don't make a ton of money. Because there's so many, but the point, the ones that are dedicated, the ones that are committed, the ones that have a plan, they do pretty well. I used to be one of them before I gave that part of my life up. So, but anyway, tell us some more thoughtful, happy stories. So, so, um, I didn't get it written down, but it happened in Iowa and Nebraska, but I don't know who did it, and I can't get internet with where I'm at to check out the fuller story. But seniors were given a free video device with easy-to-use buttons so they can talk to the family for the first time in months. So whoever this was, and I got it off Good News Network, so people can look it up if they want to, but they went to these seniors that were being isolated and trapped because of COVID, And they found devices that would be easy enough for them to use that they could understand to hook them up with their family. And I went, brilliant, because how many senior citizens struggle with technology? You know? Right. And so I'm I'm like, there we go. That's worth sharing. And, again, it was in Iowa and Nebraska, but I don't know. I'm sorry. I don't know exactly who did it, um, but I'm going to post the stories on the line later, uh, and uh, that will have that information. So that was one of the stories I wanted to share that I thought, well, that's worth sharing. What else do you have? Because we're almost out of time. We've got like two more minutes. You got another story well, for me? I have, I have a short, a little tiny baby story. But this is something that I wish about this happening in other places, and and I just think it's a good idea. Like, I've been passing out my extra produce to my neighbors. But in in Norway, people, when they harvest their apples, they hang the extras in bags on their fences so that the poor, the hungry, the homeless, whoever needs it can come and get the, the apples and eat them. And this helps them, but it also keeps the apple growing people from having rotting apples to deal with. So everybody nice. wins. I just think so that's that may- something. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. Absolutely. <laughs> nope. I was just going to see if I can get this last little story in because it's connected to what you said, which is, it was about a bride and groom. They didn't just donate their wedding food to the homeless. They dished it up on their big day. So they had all this food from the wedding, and there's a picture of them wearing masks and giving away the wedding food to people from the local homeless shelter. That is fantastic. I love that. Now, that's a relationship. That's beautiful. Yeah, because think of how much food gets thrown out after a thing like a wedding reception. They can't really reuse it. They can't, I mean, God, our wedding reception, there was a ton of food left over. And 
I was trying to force food on people to take home so because I hate to see food wasted. I mean, it's one of my pet peeves. Yeah, but um, we were far enough away from home, and you know, we just had planned a wedding and was in the wedding, and was you know, so I I didn't like think I had to. I mean, I might now, but I didn't back then to you know say, hey, I wonder if there's a shelter. But actually, it wasn't a VFW hall, so so we did leave some stuff behind that they shared with the vet. So there was so we did actually. Now that I think about it, I was a little tipsy that day. Now that I think about it, <laughs> um, we did. We had several dishes of food that we left behind that they put out for the the vets uh, at the VFW for them to eat that night when they came. That was free. It wasn't a homeless shelter, but still, at least the food didn't get wasted. Lori, Lori will be back next week for Planetary Influences, where Rob Stewart from InnerCenter.org. We'll have the upcoming astrology for the time of Libra. Come find out what's going to happen in the skies during the time of Libra with Rob Stewart, Lori Powers Auto, and myself next week right here on the Dr. Kevin Show.